watching Sports Extra Overtime, sponsored by Michael's Italian Feast. Welcome back to Sports Extra Overtime. Now time to take a deeper dive into the games of the night. We welcome John Camosa to our studio. He called the Metamora Pekin game with Clutch Sports Media. You can follow John on Twitter at JCOM91. Tonight's game won by Pekin. A huge road win at Metamora, 35-28. Really kind of a tale of two halves back and forth in the first half. Take us through that opening half of play. Yeah, that first half, it was pretty much a predominantly a run game. Peek and Metamora just both exchanging blows. Tanner Sprecher was huge for Peek in the backfield. He had three touchdowns, 198 yards on, tw on 18 carries. So that was big. And then Garrett Taylor on Metamora's side, 175 yards and also three touchdowns. So really big. And both teams kept down on the ground because it's pretty muddy out there. So the score at halftime, Metamora leads 22-14. Really great back and forth game. Metamore comes out of the halftime break. They score almost right away and looks like they're cruising. Yeah, you would think big home crowd on hand. Metamore really, you know, sets the tone there. 28-14 when Connor Wollerton had a 40-yard uh, touchdown pass to Garrett Taylor. From then on, you, you're thinking metamore has got control of this game, but something really clicked in Pekin. At the 734 mark in the third quarter, Kanye Tyler has a 25-yard run to cut it to one score at 28-21. And then in the fourth quarter, all Pekin, 35-yard run by Tanner Sprecher to put Pekin behind 28-27. And then quarterback Scotty Jordan, a 10-yard pass to Brody Keene to pretty much seal it 35-28 with four minutes left. And then Pekin's defense held Metamore off. You, you said it perfectly. Pekin goes on a 21-0 run to end the game. you got to give a ton of credit to their defense. How great were they down the stretch? Yeah, down the stretch. I mean, early on in the game, you know, both defenses were struggling, allowing a lot of offense. But it, late in the game when it mattered, Pekin's defense really stepped up and then ultimately stopped Connor Woolerton on that last so it was huge. So there's two weeks left in the regular season. We take a look at the kind of greater picture of the Middle Atlantic Conference standings. So we have Morton and Washington now tied for first place at four and one. They kind of control their own destiny. I mean, it's kind of still everybody's game at this point. Yeah, it really is. I mean, going in from last week, there was a four-way tie. Now it's Washington and Morton sitting atop the Middle Atlantic standings. Washington five and two and four and one in the conference, as well as Morton. So Metamore, Washington next week going to be a huge game. And then Limestone travels to Morton. Still two weeks left. Don't look out. Dunlap, Pekin. And Metamore at 3-2 in conference play. Just a game back. Still a lot to play for in the Middle Atlantic Conference. Thank you, John, for your analysis. Now, with a look at a crucial contest between Normal West, here's Kurt Pegler. All right, thank you, Matt. Joining us now from our uh, WMBD newsroom in Bloomington is Joe Deacon from WCBU Radio. You can follow him on Twitter at JoeDeacon91 for score updates. Joe was in Normal for the Normal West Danville Big 12 game, a 28-14 win for the Wildcats and let's first talk about the defensive effort by the Wildcats they held Danville without a point until fourth uh, the fourth quarter right yeah they yeah Kurt they really did um, they had a big stand in the first quarter they uh, Danville drove within the 10 yard line and I, they stopped them on downs and took over at the six and uh, then they really kind of from there their defense really gained control and then Danville couldn't really move the bunch the ball much until they capitalized on some Wildcats lapses in the fourth quarter. And Jaden Mangrum and, makes uh, his first just, career start at quarterback really, for West, and he really played very well for the Wildcats tonight. Yeah, he really did. Uh, he said uh, after the game that he was a little nervous going in, uh, the junior starting his first game as a starter. Um, but uh, his confidence grew as the game went on. He uh, engineered an 18-play, uh, 95-yard drive and capped it off with a two-yard run that got, was the first score of the game. And then a couple uh, series later, he uh, got in on a seven-yard uh, run, diving for the pylon that uh, gave West a 14-0 lead at halftime. And really a solid effort on both sides of the football. I'm looking at Max Zebarth with 150 yards receiving. He didn't mind the quarterback change. It was a, it was a really a good night from start to finish for the Wildcats. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Zebarth had a couple of big third uh, down catches for that uh, extended the chains on those uh, that 95-yard drive. And then he, in the third quarter, he had a big 78-yard uh, reception down the left sideline. He, he caught a little, maybe a 15, 20-yard out and was racing down the sideline and got tripped up two yards shy of the goal line. Uh, uh, Jaden Mangrum said they did have to kind of needle him a little bit on the sidelines. But a couple plays later, the uh, Wildcats were able to punch it in and build on their way to a 28 nothing lead before holding on for victory. It was, uh, and now they're looking ahead to the next two weeks against Richwoods and uh, possibly a share of the Big 12 title if they can beat normal community in their rivalry game. 
in, in our final 15 seconds, I want to ask you about that. That's what, that's what it's coming down to, a week eight game against Richwoods and then maybe Normal West against Normal Community in week nine for the Big 12 title. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, Coach Nathan Fincham said that's, they've got their destiny in their hand. All right, Joe, thank you very much for your analysis tonight. We'll hear from our Friday night correspondents right here on Sports Extra Overtime every Friday night. Still to come, we take a closer look at